Kia ora, Year 12. Here are the first three questions from the AS past paper that I gave out on Thursday. So this is October, November 2021. Um, I'm going to just start by skimming through them and also showing you the bit of the formula sheet that you might want to use. So the first question, question one, is a binomial expansion thing. Um, and you shouldn't need the formula for that by now, especially if you are in the A-level class where you will have got used to doing much harder ones than this this year. But if you do need it, I've put it in here on um, this slide, so you can maybe freeze the video and copy down that formula if you need it. Um, remember that the uh, coefficients in the binomial expansion come from Pascal's triangle, but if you've got to do a really big one where it's too hard to write that out, they are all given by uh, N NCR, which is this here. And obviously we use that heaps in the stats one exam as well. Right, so that's the first question. The second question is one about a curve and a line. And we've got to find the set of values for which the curve and the line don't intersect. So we're going to be equating these two things and then thinking about when we know that there won't be any solutions. Right, and that turns into a quadratic equation. And a quadratic equation has no solutions when the discriminant is negative. So that's the method for that question there. And then the last one gives you a big hint about how to solve a trig equation. It says solve by factorising. Um, and this question is a very generous, I think, four marks if you're confident with your factorising skills. So I should be able to get through all of these, hopefully, in 15 minutes. Let's give it a go. So question 1a is a very easy expansion. Um, I'm going to write it out fully here. I suspect many of you skipped that line. I think that's okay in this case, as long as you don't screw it up. So in here we get 1 minus 2 times 1 over 2x, for those middle two terms, plus 1 over 2x squared, which gives me 1 minus 1 over x, plus 1 over 4x squared. And I think that's one mark. Yep, that's one mark. Then we have to find the first four terms in the expansion and ascending powers of this thing here. So 1 plus 2x to the power of 6. So that's going to um, take coefficients from the sixth row of Pascal's triangle. So for me, it's quicker to just scribble that down than it is to grab my calculator. Maybe different for you guys, but hopefully this is how most of you have done it. And then it's going to be 1 times... This one, 1 to the power of 6, and this to the power of 0, plus 6, times 1 to the power of 5, times 2x to the power of 1. We just have to do the first four terms, so 15 times 1 to the power of 4, times 2x squared, plus 20, times 1 cubed, times 2x cubed, dot, dot, dot. Cleaning that up gives me 1 plus 12x plus 60x squared, plus 160x cubed. And in the next question, we put those two bits together. We have to find the coefficient of x in this expansion. So I'll show you how I've set this out, um, because you need to keep your place value kind of clearly in mind. So we've got 1 minus 1 over 2x squared, times 1 plus 2x to the power of 6, which equals 1 minus 1 over x, plus 1 over 4x squared, times 1 plus 12x, so this thing here, right, plus 60x squared, plus 160x cubed. And you can see that to get the coefficient with x, I'm going to use those two, those two, and those two. So let's just put in some dot, dot, dots, because there's a whole lot of other stuff in here we're not looking at. So it'll be 12x, and then it's going to be, for the next one, I've written it on a separate line. You don't have to do that, but when I'm doing messy expansions, that's a method that works quite well for me. So this times this, and lastly we're going to have this one here times this one here. So it'll be plus 1 over 4x squared times 160x cubed. So cleaning all that up, and then dot, 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 dot. So that equals dot, dot, dot. 12 minus 60 plus 40x. So 52 minus 60, which is negative 8x, 
So they ask for the coefficient, not negative 8x. So the coefficient is negative 8. All right, so five minutes in. Um, need to crank up the speed a little bit. Looking at question two, this is worth five marks, which I think is pretty generous. Um, what we've got to do here is to just do a few words of communication about what's going on. So y is equal to kx squared plus 2x minus k is a parabola, and y is equal to kx minus 2 is a straight line. So what we're thinking about is we've got some parabola, right? it could be here, and we've got some straight line here. And in that case, as I've drawn it, they don't intersect. So what we're going to do is set up the conditions for them to intersect and then figure out when there are no solutions. So if no intersection, then this has no solves, no solutions. So rewriting that into a nice clean quadratic, we get kx squared plus 2x minus kx minus k plus 2 equals 0. Now we want to be very careful not to make silly mistakes with this constant term on the end, but we can see in here that we've got kx squared plus 2 minus kx plus 2 minus k is equal to 0. So for no solutions, we need b squared minus 4ac, strictly negative. So in this case, we've got 2 minus k, this is b here, 2 minus k, all squared, minus 4 times k times 2 minus k has to be less than 0. A um, couple of ways I could go here. I could actually factorize from here, but what I did is I just, I didn't actually look at that being a common factor. So I'm going to do this the slow way first, right, which is to go 4 minus 2k plus k squared minus 8k plus 4k squared is negative, right? That gives me 5k squared. Something's gone wrong. No, it's not 4 minus 2k, right? It's 4 minus 4k. So bad mistake there, right? But I'm not going to redo the video. But just always check back those quadratic expansions when you do them. It's very easy to do what I just did, right? So in here, we've got 5k squared minus 12k. Um, so that's those ones. That's that done. And then lastly, we've got plus 4, and we need that to be negative. Now, if you look at that, that's very easy to factorize. We've got a 5k here and a k here. Now I'm looking for plus here and a minus here. So it's going to be minus minus pattern. Let's just look at whether um, 4 and 1 is not going to work. So let's try 2 and 2 and see if that gets what I want. It does. I've got 5k squared minus 10k minus another 2k plus 4. So we are good. Now I find it useful when I'm working with quadratic inequalities to always sketch what I've got. This here is an up the right way parabola. And we can see from the factorized form that it's going to be sitting here and here. So it's going to be negative between, but not including, those two values. So I could do this to get those points and make sure I'm not making algebraic errors. And then I can say that k has to be between those two numbers. So 2 fifths is less than k is less than 2. So the line and circle don't intersect. Now I'm just going to go back and see if it's way faster to work with this and take out the common factor of 2 minus k. So we've got 2 minus k into 2 minus k minus 4k. And that is much better, right guys, because it's already factorized it for me. So here we can skip having to use our brains to factorize because I've got 2 minus 5k negative. And that's um, all the same as what I've got because I can times both of those by negative 1. So that's the same as negative k minus 2 times negative 5k minus 2, just in case anyone's wondering if something's gone wrong there. It hasn't because these multiply to give me a 1. So this is exactly the same thing as what I got. 
Right, but in either case, what you've got to do is you've got to set up that discriminant, show when it's negative, and just at the end write a statement that clearly says for which values of k the line and the circle don't intersect. So answer the question that they've given you. Um, that's a lot like some of the circles work that I've just put up on Google Classroom where you've got to show if circles and lines intersect. It will always come down to working with a discriminant condition and a quadratic. Let's look at the last question in here. Um, when you were doing this in class, I saw a few people having trouble with this one. And I think it's because you've forgotten how good two-step factorising is. So when you look at this equation, it doesn't look very nice. But we're just going to break it down into bits. So first I'm going to write it out over here. And we've got 6 cos theta tan theta minus 3 cos theta plus 4 tan theta minus 2 equals 0. So looking at that, if they hadn't given you the clue about factorising, you might think that you're going to go through and replace the tan theta with sine theta over cos theta. And yes, you could do that, but that would definitely be the scenic route to answering this question. The better way to go is to look at the first two, two terms and to factorise those. And then we're going to look at the second two terms and we're going to factorise those. So for the first two terms, we've got a common factor of 3 cos theta, and then we've got 2 tan theta minus 1. And here we've got 2 as the common factor. 2 into 2 tan theta minus 1 equals 0. Fully factorising gives me 3 cos theta plus 2 times 2 tan theta minus 1 equals 0. Now if you're in the AES class this year and you're not good with two-step factorising, I've done a video on it on my Level 2 Algebra playlist. If you can't find it, just send me or Mr Hawke an email and we can show you where it is. So here, what have I got down to? Well, I've either got cos of theta is equal to negative 2 thirds or tan. So either this factor is 0 or this factor is 0. So tan theta is equal to 1 half. The values we want it for are very easy. So we're working with AS here, not A level. So it's it's going to be easy, especially if I sketch a graph and I look at how many solutions I'm going to have. So that's my cosine graph um, between the two values. And here's my tan graph between 0 and 180. So I can see that I'm just going to have the one solution here for this one, and I'm going to have one solution about here for this one. That means all I've got to do is grab my calculator and go theta is equal to inverse cosine of negative two-thirds. So the value I should get there is 131.8 degrees. And for the tan graph, theta is equal to tan inverse of one-half, which comes out at 26.6 degrees. Just going to check those on my calculator, because I actually I did cheat and look at the mark schedule for those answers. I just want to check the cosine one, which value is going to come out of my calculator. So cosine inverse of negative two-thirds. Hmm, something wrong with my calculator. I'm pretty sure that that's the value your calculator is going to give you. The other thing it might give you is the solution further back, in which case we've got to add on um, 360 to our answer. Okay, so that's all for this video. I'm going to do question four on its own um, soon. And then um, if you've got any other questions you want video this weekend, just send me an email and I'll get onto them.